looking at this fake table of information on a police department. And we're looking at promotions within the department. This is on page 210. And this is a contingency table. So we're gonna do a bunch of contingency table problems. Now the first set of problems is gonna kind of work through what's in the text. But your first job when you are working on contingency table problems is to just start with your totals, okay? So I've just added up the males, I've added up the females, I've added up all the people who are promoted and all the people who were not promoted. From there, then I can begin to answer probability questions. And what I'm imagining doing is say, having 200 names in a hat and then randomly pulling people out and wondering about the probability of getting different things. So again, I'm building a ratio and that ratio I can turn into a percentage. That's how I'm gonna communicate my probability, these problems. So let's just start with the first question. What's the probability a police officer selected at random is male? Okay. So how many people am I picking from? How many people are there total? 120. That's how many males there are total. 200. I'm picking from 200. And then the other number you just said is important because I need it for the top. But the bottom right number in the contingency table is the total total. And that's an important number that you're going to use a lot because if you're just picking from everybody, which you are a lot of the times in these questions, then that's going to be your denominator. Because again, the definition of probability is just, you know, who am I looking for over how many people are there total? That sets up your probability calculation. Now, of course, I can turn that into a percentage. I think that ends up being about 60%. Let's look at the next question. What's the probability of selecting a police officer who was promoted? Police officer of promoted. That would be 150 over 200. I, want, uh, I think it's promoted. Yep. Oh, I see, 50. 50, right, okay. And so if the probability promoted is 25%, because that's what 50 divided by 200 is, then the probability of not being promoted is the other side of that, which is 150 over 200, which is 75%. So there's a little connection there to the normal distributions and cutting 100% into two groups. That's sometimes known as the third rule of probability, which is that the complement of something happening is 100% minus that thing, that other probability. Okay, now let's talk about some slightly more difficult probability problems. Find the probability of selecting an officer who's a woman and promoted. A woman and promoted woman and someone who is promoted. So 20 over 100. Who are we picking from? How many people are there? 50. Is it 50? No. Oh. I think it's 130 over 200. Because there's 80, no wait. Oh, see, I'm looking at it in rows, not columns. So first of all, let's agree on the denominator. How many people are we picking from? Who is promoted, right? No, no, no who are we picking from? That's just the total. Women. That's who we're looking for. Who we're picking from is everybody. That's the default. 
I'm getting confused because it's saying woman and promoted, but that's right. But that's who we're looking for, not who we're picking from. Picking from everybody, but looking for a certain kind of people. Right, we're picking from everybody, but we're looking for a certain group. So, the two hundred is still the denominator. It's been the denominator for every problem we've done so far. Oops. And the 20 is the right numerator because that's how many women were promoted. That's a small group out of the 200. I'm not interested in all 80 of these women because some of them were not promoted. And I'm not interested in everybody who is promoted because some of them aren't women. I'm only interested in women and promoted. So that would turn into 10% when we do the calculation. Okay, try the next one. A man who was promoted. A man who was promoted. We're getting used to the two questions. Who am I picking from? That's the denominator. Okay, so that's 200. And what am I looking for? That would be 30. Perfect. 30 out of 200. Men who are promoted, there's 30 of them. Who am I picking from? Everybody, 200. Okay. So if you want to write that little, those questions down, then maybe that helps you. And that's the order that I think about it. You can do it in any order you want because you just, to build a ratio, you need the top number and the bottom number. But I like to hunt out the denominator first and then figure out the numerator. Okay, now let's take it up another notch. What's the probability of selecting a police officer who is female or promoted? Female or promoted. I have a question. Yep. Do we have to do two separate problems for that? Nope. Is it 20 out of 50, 20 over 50? Nope. Nope. 50 over 200? Right. Mm, halfway right. Let's start with the first question. Who, who am I picking from? Female. Nope. Everyone. Said everyone. Women. everyone. Every, yeah. Yep. I didn't say who am I looking for. I said well, who am I picking from? Now we are now going we to are gonna... a type of question where we're not picking from everybody, but I hope you've noticed so far we've always used 200 as our denominator. That's m the most likely thing to put. If you're confused and you're just kind of shooting the most likely answer is going to be the total total for the bottom number. We're picking from everybody. Now, there is a specific type of question, and it's coming up to it, where we're not going to use the bottom, the total total, but for the most part, you do. Use the total total. You're picking from everybody. Okay, next part. Who, who am I looking for? Females. Okay. Or, promoted. or they were promoted. All right, here's my example. Let's pretend that I'm letting people into my nightclub, all right? Ben's nightclub. And to come into my nightclub, you have to have Hawaiian clothes on or you have to be wearing shorts, all right? So Emily comes up and she's got pants on and no Hawaiian clothes. Is she coming in? No. No, she can't come in, okay. Now, Roderick comes up and he's got a Hawaiian shirt on. Is he coming in? Sure, he's coming in. Leah's got shorts on. Is she coming in? Yes. And then Karen has a Hawaiian shirt and shorts on. Is she coming in? Sure, she's got both things. I don't need both things, but she's got both things. It's great. Okay, so the only person who can't come is Emily because she forgot her Hawaiian clothes and her shorts. The point of an or statement is that it's more inclusive. You can have this or you can have this. Or you can have both things. I don't care. 
but you need to have one of those things to get through the bouncer. Okay, now let's, let's think about that in regards to this problem. I'm looking for females or I'm looking for people who are promoted. Do these people get to come in? Yes, because you're yep. looking for yes. either or. That's right. Do these people get to come in? Yes, because they promote it, right? This group? No. No, no. Not promoted and, and male. This group, yes. This is the both. And then this group, yes. Because they're female. Even though they weren't promoted, they're female and that's fine. That's come to my party. Okay. So the total then is actually 110. It's not any of the numbers in the table. You have to do a little bit of math to get it. Now, when you watch, if you watch the videos on section 16, she'll present a different way of doing it, which leads to the same answer, which is fine. I like this because you can just kind of work your way through every category and figure out who's part of the in-group and who's not. This is one of the harder problems because you got to think about it hard in terms of who's coming and who's not coming. Who am I, who am I pick, who am I looking for, right? Who makes me happy? What's a success? Okay, so it's time to practice. We're gonna, we're gonna hold off on this last type and we're gonna look at a table here. So I've given you a table. It's got a few more rows and columns but that doesn't change the essential thing that you're doing, which is trying to make ratios. So I've got three questions for you, and I want you to try to make three ratios and go ahead and turn them into percentages. First thing is all of the denominators are the same. What is the denominator for all of these fractions? 379. Good. Because we're picking from the total total each time. That's not stated explicitly. It's implied by saying we just want somebody with brown hair. There's no conditions put on about who we're choosing from. That's coming next. All right, so let's take the brown hair example. Then how many people are we choosing or how many people are we looking for that would make us happy? I know we're choosing, I know we're choosing 379. 129. Good. 129 out of 379. And that percent turns out to be 34%. You need to do, you should practice doing both of these parts. Don't just put it in your calculator, turn it into a percent and walk away. Because if you don't get the percent right for any reason, and I can't see your ratio, then I can't give you partial credit for it. If you got part of the fraction right, I can give you some partial credit for that. Okay, what about the next one? I'm looking for somebody with red hair and who makes over $40,000 a year. It's 15. There's only 15 of those people. 15 out of 379. And is restrictive. I need more things to be true in order for and to work. All right, this is the hardest one. Under 20,000 or black hair. Under 20,000 or black hair. Now you might be tempted to shortcut and just take 89 and 177 and put it together. But that doesn't work and I'll explain why. I want everybody in this column because they're making under 20,000. And yes, there's 89 of those people. Then I want everybody in the black hair row. So I also need these people and these people. And yes, those three numbers add up to 177. But these five numbers don't add up to 89 plus 177. What do they add up to? Oh, sorry. Oh, shoot. Ah, 
Okay, well, there it is. That's what those five numbers add up to. Is it 221? Yeah, good. So 221 out of 379, that's 58%. Okay, I feel like I'm missing something super basic. Why do I get that? Why do 89 and 177 not add up to 221? Right. Yeah. Because it double counts these people. So the way that Becky explains it, you take the 89, the 177, but then you have to subtract the overlap. So that's one, a different way to get to 221. Okay. I prefer just kind of going through group by group and saying, who do I want? Who do I not want? Who's coming to my party? My party. So it said, what is the property of picking someone who had makes? Okay. Well, I got that one wrong because I had just took 89 and 177. Right. But remember, there's two different questions. Who am I choosing from? And you should be using in general total total at the bottom. And then the, who am I looking for? You can't just add these two numbers together because you're double counting this group here. Because the 45 is included in the 89, but the 45 is also included in the 177. So if you use these totals, then you have to also back out one of those, the duplicate. So you can do 26 plus 18 plus 45, plus 87 plus 45, or you can do 89 plus 177 minus 45. Both ways give you 221. All three of these questions have the same kind of denominator, which is the total total. Okay, now, Let's turn back to this and take a look at this last kind of probability. This last kind of probability is called conditional probability. And in short, a condition is just something, it's like an extra requirement. So if I'm looking at promotions, but I'm already starting with the fact that the police officer is a woman, then I'm actually not talking about everybody. Okay, so this is where we don't use the total total. This is where we use a different subtotal. So let's go back to this table. The same ratio applies. Who am I picking from? What am I looking for? I'm going to bring this question over. It says, if a police officer is the probability got promoted. Okay. I just changed a few words, but it's basically the same idea. All right, now, as we're building this ratio, I still approach it in this order. Who am I picking from? What am I looking for? But the key part that's changed this question is the first part of the sentence. If a police officer is a woman. If a police officer is a woman, I don't care about this line, and I don't care about this line. This is all I care about. So who am I picking from? The 80? That's right, because there's 80 total police officers that are women, and that's what I'm choosing from. If a police officer is a woman, my denominator is 80. And who am I looking for? Twenty. The twenty that got promoted. Okay. So of course that's not the order and the ratio. It's twenty out of eighty. 
that's the ratio we're looking for for this probability question. Okay, so this is the basic concept of a conditional probability. We're looking at a subgroup, so the denominator is not the overall total, but the total of the subgroup. Isn't that like 25%? It's 25%. That's right. Okay, so what changed is there was a part of the sentence or a part of the question that indicated or implied that we were not talking about everybody. Compare that to these questions. In these questions, it just says, what's the probability of picking someone, blah, 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 blah. There's no part of any of these that says anything that implies we're not just picking from everybody. So these are the ones where the total total is the denominator for everything. Now, the simple rule that I'm gonna give you is that if or given are the indicators of conditionality. By that I mean, if you see if or given in the sentence, it means that we've got a conditional probability and therefore you're not looking at the whole table. You're only looking at a subgroup. And I would encourage you to either use your hands or some other way to kind of cover up part of the table that you're not interested in that helps you not get distracted by the wrong numbers. Okay, let's do this probability again. Same page, same data set. If a police officer was promoted, what is the probability officer was a man? Sorry, I need to give you your full table back, but feel free to cover up the parts that are not relevant for this problem. This is a conditional probability question. Okay, let's start with who you're picking from. I need to block out the parts of the table I'm not interested in. What's the part of the sentence that's telling me about the part of the table I'm interested in? Who was promoted, right? Yeah, if a, if a police, police officer, officer was promoted, promoted. This whole part of the table I can knock out. Not interested in this. Because the condition that I put on the table is that I want the people who are promoted. Okay. 50. So that means 50 is my total. And that means I'm looking for. 30. Thirty men, so that's thirty out of fifty, and thirty out of fifty is sixty percent. Now, just to take a step back for a second, the whole point of a contingency table, in my opinion, is that you can start to ask questions about fairness. Right. The problem with lots of institutions in this country is that they started off not being inclusive, whether we're talking about race or whether we're talking about gender, right? Police, policing used to be a profession that was male dominated. I don't know if that's still true anymore, but one of the problems as you become more inclusive and you say, hey, there's no reason why you have to be a man to be a police officer, is that if the police officer hierarchy is dominated by men, it may be hard to make sure that things happen fairly in terms of promotions or in terms of reprimands or punishments or whatever. So this is a way of thinking about those questions and thinking about fairness. Okay, let's try back to the hair and income. So these are all conditional probabilities because they all have the words gift, if or given in them. In the first one, 
I highlighted the conditional part of the sentence and the other two, you have to identify what it is. I recommend you follow the, the structure of asking about who you're interested in first and then identifying the numerator afterwards. But you can attack the problem any way you want. Let's tackle the denominators first and we'll do them in vertical practice, which just means we'll um, do all of the denominators first, just to practice that skill. Then we'll circle back and we'll do the, the numerators of each one. Now, I highlighted the conditional part. It's given that you're interested in black hair. If I'm interested in black hair, I'm not interested in these people. And I'm not interested in these people. So what's my total? 177. Exactly. Okay. I'm going to let you do the next one. You pick someone who made under 20,000. So what's the total? 168. It's 89 because I'm looking for someone who made under 20,000. Sorry, not looking. Oh, okay. I was listening. Picking from someone who made under 20,000. Okay. And then the last one. It's a little tricky. I got 290. I don't know. Very good because I'm interested in these people and these people. So in other words, I'm, I'm blacking out this group and this group because I'm not interested in those people, but there's two totals here that I need to bring together and that makes 290. Okay, so these are conditional probabilities. All right, now we can circle back and finish the problems and look at the percentages. I'm only looking at the black haired people and I'm picking someone who made over 40,000. So the numerator should be 45, 45. Good. And here's the percent. It's rounded to the nearest whole percentage. Okay. Someone who made under 20K, so I'm picking out of this column, but I want someone who has red hair. 26. Very good. Okay. So that's 29%. Again, you're just dividing, turning it into a percentage. And last but not least, brown hair in the two groups that I'm interested in would be 111. 111, which is 38%. OK. OK, now let's mix it up. I'm giving you a hint here because I am providing you with a highlighted keyword that shows you which one is a conditional probability. But the other ones are back to the other probabilities that are not conditional. So one of the things that happens as soon as we start talking about conditional probability is everything we've learned about the total total goes out the window. But remember that the total total is the most common number that we're gonna use here. All right, I'm gonna give you some time to work on those problems. Okay, let's talk denominators. Now here's where your denominator focus pays off because all of these have the same denominator except the one that has that red word in it because that's the conditional probability. So what's the denominator for all of these other ones? Is it 1127? Exacto mundo because it's the total total. And what's the denominator for this special question which is a conditional probability? Given that they don't wear glasses. Is it 227? No. 742. 742. Right. You've got to focus on the part of the question that has the given or the if in it. So this whole section here is the condition. K 
given that they don't wear glasses, don't wear glasses means I'm not looking at these people and I'm not looking at these people, the totals. I'm just looking at the people who don't wear glasses. Okay. All right. Now we can just take it from the top. Glasses and no degree. That's who I'm looking for. Glasses 45. and no degree, 45 people, good. I've already eliminated the top and the bottom row. I'm looking for someone who has no degree. Is it 227? This is why the blocking out is important because you wouldn't be saying 227 if I had this properly blocked out. That's gone and that's gone. I'm interested only in the people who don't wear glasses. So now what do you say? No degree. 182. Exactly. Okay. So use that strategy. You don't have to scribble things out. You can if you want. You want to leave it to the end and then do the scribbling. You can, but well, of course, this is on a computer screen, not on a piece of paper. So it might be easier just to use your hands and just kind of cover the parts up you don't want. Okay, a uh, bachelor's degree or higher? Fast 16. Good. Because I want anybody with a bachelor's degree or higher, I'm not, I don't say anything about the glasses, so I'm interested in everybody who has a bachelor's degree or higher. That's 516 out of 1127. And finally, picking someone who has an associate's or doesn't wear glasses. In some ways, this is the hardest one or the second hardest one probably have to look at the statistics to see what people got wrong but this is that or question associates or doesn't wear glasses would you add 45 with 186 no nope. let's just go through there's six groups, so let's just go through each group and say whether they belong or not. Am I letting these people into the party? No. Do they meet They're either, either conditions? conditions? No. No. Mm -mm. What about these people? Yes. Because yes. They have an associate's degree. What about these what people? About these No. no, no. These people? Yes. That's right, because they don't wear glasses. These people meet both requirements, and of course they're coming. And then these people? No. Yes. They, they don't wear glasses, so they're good. Associates or they don't wear glasses, all four of these groups are coming. So what's that add up to? Nine twenty-eight. Yep. Yep. Nine twenty-eight. Okay. Here are the percentages. Just so you want to check and see that you got those right, because that's another part of the problem. But that's it, essentially, for the first part of probability. Now, those set of questions all, you know, tend to be 10 to 12 percent of your, the final exam. So it's a, it's a good block to focus on. Would you mind explaining the overlap thing just one more time? If you're going to do an overlap, you would do 742 plus 384, but then you have to take out the group that gets counted twice. And which group is that? 198. Right. We're not taking them out totally. We're just, we're just accounting for the fact that 198 was counted twice, so we're taking out the duplicate. So if you add that up, that comes to 928.
That's because 742 came from 182, 198, and 362. And 384 came from 186 and 198. So if I put all five of those together, I'm double counting the 198, right? You there, Emily? Yeah, I got it now. I get I so would it be better, do you think, to just add them all like one by one or like which way do you prefer to do it? I, I prefer the one by one approach, but mathematically it's faster to do the totals minus the overlap, especially if there's a lot of groups. Right. Okay, I get it now. Okay. Okay. So the last hour I want to spend on the other type of conditional probability question, which has some nice connections with our moment in time because of the pandemic and testing. Testing is such a big issue. False positives and false negatives are back in the news. So in the conceptual thing, that you want to understand is that when a person takes a test for a disease, there's a chance that you could get an answer that's not actually right. That shouldn't be surprising because anybody who's lived for any amount of time has either been involved in a pregnancy test, false alarm, or known somebody who was involved in one. And it's not just because pregnancy tests are cheap, it's just because the chemical processes that medical tests depend on are not uh, foolproof because they involve things that can just naturally go wrong. Whether it's from random sampling of urine or blood or whether something gets contaminated in the process and so that invalidates the test or makes it give the wrong error. There's just things that go wrong in, in the process of medical testing. So the book chooses to start with HIV testing as an example, and there's a reason that they're choosing this particular uh, disease. And then we're going to look at some other examples and just kind of work through how to do those things. 